Right now, as you're watching this, an object that has been traveling through space for roughly 7 billion years is passing through our solar system, not orbiting, not captured. Passing through, it formed around a star that isn't our sun, in a system we'll never visit, and it has been drifting between stars longer than Earth has had complex life. This object carries ingredients that can form life, emits a glow invisible to the human eye, and is revealing information about regions of the galaxy we have never observed directly. So before we go deeper, tap like and stay with me. Not for the algorithm, but because the more people understand what just happened, the less alone we are in processing it. Because last night, the object we call 3i Atlas, the interstellar visitor that's been defying comet physics for months, did something no natural comet, asteroid, or wandering rock has ever done. It executed a maneuver, not a tiny drift, not a gentle push from outgassing, not a correction we can wave away as a modeling error, a controlled, directed, intelligent change in its motion through space, a deliberate burn, a precise change in speed and direction that matches what we'd expect from a vehicle, not a rock. For the last 14 hours, my phone has not stopped vibrating. I've spoken with researchers at NASA, ESA, JAXA, and multiple independent observatories. Everyone is tired, wired, and trying not to say the one word we've all been trained for decades to avoid. Because the raw data they're sharing in private is staggering. It contradicts orbital mechanics as we've applied them to natural objects. It clashes with our understanding of energy budgets, propulsion systems, and what you can physically do with a 30 billion ton block of ice and rock. Here's what we know. At exactly 11.47.23 p.m., UT, every infrared instrument pointed at 3i Atlas saw the same thing. An instantaneous spike in brightness by a factor of 12 in the infrared band. Not a slow ramp. Not a flare that builds over minutes as ice sublimates. One second, it was normal. The next second, it was brighter than some stars in the field. To imagine that, picture sitting in a room at normal room temperature and, in a single heartbeat, the air around you jumps to hotter than the surface of the sun. That's the kind of energy release we're talking about. Natural comets don't do that. Sublimation is messy, chaotic, lumpy. It burps and sputters. It does not behave like someone flipping a switch. Dr. Sarah Martinez, who happened to be on duty at the infrared observatory that first flagged the anomaly, told colleagues she assumed the detector had failed. She rebooted her system, rechecked calibrations, and only when the cross-checks started coming in did the denial crack. Spitzer saw the same spike. Facilities in Hawaii saw it. Telescopes in Chile saw it. Even radio observatories that weren't looking for light variations saw correlated changes in thermal emission. Independent teams on different continents, using different instruments, all watched 3i Atlas turn on like a furnace, sustain that level for exactly 14 minutes, and then shut down just as cleanly as it began. During that window, localized regions on its surface climbed to around 1200 Kelvin, hot enough to melt aluminum, deform steel, and vaporize most ices almost instantly. Yet the overall structure of the object remained intact. No massive fragment cloud, no catastrophic breakup, no comet disintegration signature, just a controlled high-energy event focused on certain regions, and then silence. An hour later, when the tracking networks pushed their updated orbital solutions, the real shock hit. 3i Atlas had changed its velocity by about 4.3 kilometers per second. Let that sink in. You're talking about something with a mass on the order of tens of billions of tons, suddenly accelerating by 4,300 meters every second of its motion. The energy required to do that in just 14 minutes is equivalent to taking all the sunlight that hits the entire Earth over the course of a full day and dumping it into that single object. Not over centuries, over a quarter of an hour. Dr. Robert Chen at MIT ran the numbers using standard rocketry equations. If you tried to achieve that delta vib with chemical rockets, the kind we use to launch spacecraft, you'd need more than 200 billion tons of propellant. That's more mass than the object itself. Even if 3i Atlas were hollow and filled edge to edge with the best known chemical fuel, you still couldn't get this maneuver in that time frame. Switch to ion drives and things don't get better. Ion propulsion is incredibly efficient, but its power is low. You can accumulate big changes over months or years, not minutes. Even the most optimistic ion engine concepts can't deliver a 4.3 kilometers kick to something this massive in 14 minutes. The power requirement alone would dwarf anything we've ever built. So whatever did this isn't chemical. It isn't ion. It isn't any kind of propulsion we've ever tested or even seriously engineered at this scale. 
The only honest thing physicists can say right now is that this was a controlled energy release using physics we do not yet understand. And then we get to the part that keeps people awake. The maneuver wasn't random. Before this event, the predicted trajectory of 3i Atlas would have brought it past Earth at about 0.08 astronomical units early in January 2026. Think of that as a safe, interesting, but not terrifying flyby. After the maneuver, the new orbit puts the closest approach at roughly 0.04 AU, half the distance, and the date has shifted forward, landing in late December instead of early January. In other words, the object is now coming sooner and closer, and its vector is more tightly aligned with the inner solar system and our orbital path. If a natural comet randomly outgasses unevenly, you might see small deviations, slight nudges that push it a little one way or another. But you don't see a perfectly timed, precisely calculated burn that halves the missed distance and advances the rendezvous date. You don't see a smooth vector change that looks exactly like a planned course correction. That alone would be enough to rewrite chapters in every celestial mechanics textbook on Earth. But the universe apparently decided that wasn't dramatic enough for one night. Because during those same 14 minutes where the infrared spike and the orbital change occurred, instruments across nearly the entire electromagnetic spectrum recorded something else. Signals. Radio observatories began picking up broadband emissions spanning roughly 400 megahertz up to tens of gigahertz. Not noise. Not a random hiss, but structured, modulated patterns. Optical telescopes equipped with fast photometers recorded millisecond scale flashes in narrow blue and green bands, strobing in precise intervals. X-ray observatories saw pulses of high-energy photons in a rhythm that did not match any known natural background source. When signal analysts started pulling those data streams apart, the hairs on their arms stood up. These emissions weren't chaotic. They contained headers, repeating segments at the start of each burst. They showed synchronization markers, the kind of timing reference you add when you expect someone to try to line up multiple channels. They displayed error correction patterns, exactly like the redundancy schemes we use to transmit data reliably through noisy environments. Dr. Jennifer Williams at SETI, who has spent her entire career trying not to overinterpret tantalizing but ambiguous signals, said something on a private call that later leaked. She said, if this pattern came from a star hundreds of light years away, we would declare it a techno signature without hesitation. That's how clean it is. That's how far it sits from the messy randomness of nature. The optical flashes behaved like laser pulses, coherent and sharply defined. The timing jitter was in the microsecond range, meaning whatever is generating them has a clock and cares deeply about precision. The X-ray pulses showed signatures of particle acceleration in strong electromagnetic fields, the kind of thing you see in laboratory accelerators and in certain extreme astrophysical environments. But here they were synchronized with the radio and optical pattern. And inside the radio band, buried within the broader broadband emissions, was something even more deliberate, a repeating primer. Every 427 seconds, a narrow carrier at the hydrogen line, around 1.42 GHz, lit up. That frequency has been talked about in SETI literature for decades as the obvious hailing channel, because hydrogen is the most common element in the universe, and that line stands out like a universal dial tone. Riding on that carrier was a sequence that will look very familiar to anyone who's ever studied hypothetical interstellar messaging, prime numbers in ascending order, then the Fibonacci sequence, then approximations to P and the golden ratio then progressively more complex arrangements that can be mapped into grids and simple diagrams. This is exactly the sort of thing humans have proposed sending out. If we ever wanted to tell an unknown intelligence, we understand math, we understand patterns, we are not noise. Whoever or whatever is doing this appears to be using the same logic in reverse, as if they've anticipated the nervous species on the third planet, will be listening and will need a tutorial on how to read what comes next. Once that realization hit, everything accelerated. Within hours, ESA quietly drafted and then publicly announced the framework for an emergency fast-track intercept mission. The idea is brutally simple. Take existing propulsion stages, stack them with a bare-bones probe, strip every non-essential system, and launch within eight months on a direct course to intersect 3i Atlas somewhere along its new path. China, never eager to be left out of a historic moment, signaled that it 
intends to launch its own intercept even sooner, leveraging its heavy lift rockets and lunar infrastructure. Russia, with its deep heritage in radio astronomy, brought its full array of dishes online and almost immediately began reporting even deeper layers of structure embedded in the signal. Subcarriers hidden inside subcarriers. Modulation patterns that look like multiple channels multiplexed together, possibly carrying different types of data at once. Behind closed doors, government representatives, military strategists, and scientific advisors are holding emergency meetings. No one is using the word threat publicly, but privately. You can imagine the questions being asked. If this is a vehicle and not a rock, who built it? What is its mission? Is the course correction simply an attempt to get closer for observation? Or is it a rendezvous? Are we the ones being studied? Or are we just in the way of some other objective? People keep asking what I think is going to happen next. The honest answer is that nobody knows. We don't even know yet whether we're seeing a single craft or something more like an automated probe network disguised as a comet. We don't know if the signals are meant for us, or if we just happen to be eavesdropping on a communication routine that's been running for millions of years. What we do know is this. After last night, after November 15th, 2025, at 11.47 p.m., UT, the story of humanity split. There is the version of our history where we thought we were alone, and everything beyond the atmosphere was silent, rock, and fire. And there is the version we're living in now, where we have, for the first time, empirical, repeatable evidence that something out there is using technology and physics beyond our current reach. Personally, I hope this maneuver was driven by curiosity, not hostility. I hope the sequence of numbers and constants is a handshake codec, not a countdown. I hope that whatever intelligence built and controls 3i Atlas sees something in us worth talking to, worth preserving, worth understanding. Because if this object decided to demonstrate what real power looks like, it chose a very gentle way to do it. It could have stayed dark. It could have ignored us completely. Instead, it flashed, spoke in math, and stepped closer. From this point on, our job is painfully simple and impossibly hard at the same time. We watch. We listen. We analyze every bit that falls into our receivers. We argue in conference rooms about what to send back, if anything. We design interceptors and hope they can survive the encounter long enough to send home a picture, a spectrum, a whisper of what this thing looks like up close. The universe has just answered a question we weren't ready to hear spoken out loud. We are not alone. The next questions are far more dangerous. What is out there? What does it want? And what role, if any, do we play in its plans? For now, all we can do is stay informed and stay curious. This is not the moment to look away. If you want to keep following this as it unfolds, the trajectory updates, the signal analysis, the mission designs, the first attempts at decoding whatever is embedded in that hydrogen line primer, stay here. The cosmos is clearly not finished talking. Click on the next video and let's keep walking together into whatever comes next.